Okay, so I hope all is doing well. Today, with your permission, uh, we're going to do a short lesson and uh, some suggestion for practicing uh, about in invention number two in C minor. Okay, here are the music. Here is the music, are the notes. And I'm going to play first just the melody. It's essentially a very long line in C minor. And the purpose of the whole line eventually is to lead to G minor, and then he starts the same melody in G minor. So let's hear it once more. Now it's going to start from measure 13, same melody. So this is the same, of course, as this. So that's why I'm saying that the purpose of this line eventually was to lead and very, very um, typically with back, right? If this is starting on C, C minor, then we're going to the fifth here and we're going to go to G minor here. Now, <clears throat> if he didn't do anything else and just kept this in G, that whole line would then lead to D and D would lead to A, and A would lead to E, and he would go around the entire circle of fifths playing that entire melody. And that's what I actually did today. I memorized this melody, and then once it got to G, I did play the original one um, throughout, and then it led me to D. So if I, I'll try to do it now, if I play, Bach wouldn't do that, right? He would then design this melody to go back to C later on. <clears throat> because, of course, he doesn't want to <clears throat> go over the entire circle of fifth and play the melody 12 times, right? So here is the melody. And that's what I suggest for you to do for ear training. I think it's great to try to figure by memory We'll start here now in D minor. And I actually went today and did the whole 12 keys. Uh, so that's my suggestion, suggestion 
to you. And I know it, today we're doing some rather advanced stuff. So I apologize if this is too advanced for you uh, because I know it's memorizing this whole melody is not an easy thing and that would take a while and then doing it by ear. And then you really later on would really appreciate what Bach actually did and how he did not stay all through in G minor, but then went back to C, uh, C minor. So, um, yeah, so that would be my suggestion for the day. And um, another thing, of course, to do would be to, and that I think if you studied with Bach, they would tell you to compose. Can you compose a melody that starts in C minor and then go to G minor? And then, you know, just how do you lead? The whole story is about the accidentals, right? If you take a melody in C major, the minute you're gonna introduce, let's say F sharp to that melody, because F sharp exists in G major, so that melody will then gravitate to G. So here is, um, that may come out as a very, very bad example, but here is uh, some melody in C. Now, once I put F sharp, See, I'll have to cancel that sharp, bring back the F. And now you're back in C. So, so with that kind of in mind, you can try to compose a melody and can be much, much shorter than what we looked at uh, at the second invention, which is such a long long melody and of course this is just the right hand and then the whole story is about how Bach is going to use the same exact melody as a canon I think two measures behind just going and you know that's his genius the, you know the, the the level of compositional perception to be able to look at the structure and understand it how it is composed that's really the genius of Bach. Um, so yeah, so I hope you're gonna enjoy doing that if anybody is gonna actually do that. And the last thing for today is name that tune. I cannot remember for three weeks what is this tune. And if anybody can tell me, I would really appreciate it. I think it's Charlie Parker, right? that tune I asked everyone nobody remembers the name of that one so I'm embarrassed to say I forgot that one so you can write it down below if anybody remembers so hope you enjoyed this today this was fun and any questions and uh, comment let me know and have a great day great night great afternoon wherever you are and see you soon bye for now